so I'm on a long drive the other day, and I'm trying to distract myself from George's many fine anti-abortion billboards with the panel show on NPR. Um, and the subject on the show is ISIS, and more specifically, why Muslims from wealthy families in the industrialized world are choosing to leave representative democracies to go die in a desert theocracy. So you've got two liberal academics, a liberal imam and a liberal host, wrestling over this question and completely unable to formulate an answer because they've already taken the answer off the table. You got uh, Professor Everett K. Firthworth babbling about, well, we know that it's not the religion because all these prominent Muslim leaders say this isn't what the religion says, and they agree that ISIS doesn't represent real Islam, and then, you, of course, the token apologist can't agree more, and the host chimes in about how, well, shucks, we all know that Islam is a beautiful and peace-loving religion, so it must be some other factor that drives them to do all this crazy shit, but what other than the religion they all share and claim as their solitary motive for this action, could possibly be motivating this action. And meanwhile, I'm looking around at these billboards of, you know, babies that never got to play with a train set because their mothers killed them when they were only eight cells old, and I'm thinking, here I am, trapped between the stupidity of the right and the stupidity of the left. How many liberal Christian leaders could I line up that would tell you aborting a four-day-old fetus isn't really murder? You know, how many, how many liberal Christians could I line up to tell you that Jesus was okay with gay marriage? Does that suddenly make abortion clinic bombings and Mike Huckabee inexplicable? So whether or not they know it, what they're really saying is we all agreed on the Muslims kill people because they're oppressed narrative. So how are we going to shoehorn these contrary facts into it? And, and I don't think they're conscious of that. You know, everybody crams facts into their worldview. But this isn't exactly a situation with no consequence. And if we can't even admit to ourselves that the root of the problem is the religion, how can we have a realistic national dialogue about it? You know, as, as imperfect as our democracy is, it's still a democracy. Our national conversation informs our national policy. Meanwhile, you got a bunch of right-wing bigots on one side saying it's the religion, sure, because they have the wrong religion. And on the other side, you got a bunch of left-wing hippies castrated by political correctness saying, well, it must be our fault somehow. It's definitely not the religion. Couldn't be that. And, and hey, you think ISIS is going to be a big campaign issue, perhaps? You, th you think the average moderate makes up their mind a week before the election American is going to tend towards the person who admits what the problem is and proposes a crappy solution or the person who pretends the problem isn't there? Because if I had to guess, I'd say most of us would rather see the emperor in a chicken suit than stare at his balls. Now look, this is by and large an honest mistake. It's born out of the same cognitive malfunction that has us setting aside all the information in consumer reports because some dude at work's uncle had a Camry and he hated it. See, the problem for a lot of liberals is that they've only really encountered liberal theists. I, I mean, fuck, the majority of them are liberal theists. You know, they're aware of the extremists, but by definition, those guys are the extreme. They're way over on that other end. So they assume that most religious people are like the ones they know. And the extremists are just fucking up the otherwise stellar reputation of their parents or, or the reformed Jewish friends they've got or that sweet Muslim lady at work. But the fact is the liberal theists are also extremists, just extremists the other way. They are in no way the average. I mean, think about what it means to be a liberal theist. Essentially, these are people who profess something they don't actually believe. And if you want to find out how true that is, just start by trying to pin down exactly what they mean by, I believe in God. You know, they're not talking about the God of the Bible, the Quran, or the Torah. They're not talking about a God who directly responds to prayers for good parking spaces, or a God that sends vengeance hurricanes, or even a God that holds the logically contradictory qualities of being omnipotent, omniscient, and omnibenevolent. In fact, if you dig deep enough, as often as not, they'll toss out a complete non-statement like, I just believe there's something out there. And again, they're not talking about fucking Popeye's fried chicken. We can all agree that's a thing that's out there. They're talking about nothing at all. And to people like this, the extremists are even more baffling than they are to me. Because look, if you start with the precept that they actually believe this shit, questions like why would Muslims from wealthy European families join ISIS, that's pretty easy to answer. So our question is like, why would that guy kill that abortion doctor? Or why can't they just get over the gay marriage thing? Or why would you be willing to blow yourself up over that? If they actually believe the stuff they say they believe, the answer to all of those questions simply becomes they actually believe the stuff they say they believe. But a liberal theist can't say, well, you know, Christians bomb abortion clinics because they actually believe in the Bible without admitting to themselves how little they actually believe in the Bible. Likewise, an atheist whose opinion of religion has been inordinately colored by liberal theists can't just say, well, that's the logical extension of believing in that shit because they've got all these examples that they don't know are statistical outliers. But they are. Look, doing the movie review show now, it's rather striking that they don't really make movies for the kind of religious. 
You know, this bazillion dollar industry seems to cater entirely to people that think evolution is bullshit, divorce is a sin, and that God's actually sitting somewhere with a fucking checklist of shit he's going to put you through between now and heaven. And of course that's who they cater to because that's the average. Look, more than half of American Christians completely reject evolution. That's true, even if you factor out the ones who believe in God-guided evolution, which you probably shouldn't because that doesn't make any fucking sense. You know, more than half of American Christians think homosexuality is a sin against God. Same thing with abortion. Same thing with divorce. The same is true with the devil being a real person that exists. Hell, well over half of American Christians believe that your body can be possessed by fucking demons. In a world that knows all about epilepsy and mental illness, that is the average. Now look, only the people standing outside of the building can really see how crooked its walls are. It is our moral obligation to tell the people inside that building that it's dangerous in there. And sorry, the left, but that trumps our social obligation to be nice.